Hey, hey, thanks for stopping by. I love to talk about hot penny stocks. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is March 27th. It is Wednesday. Now, tomorrow, March 28th, being a Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. Do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host, Taylor, who is now on camera, we go on live for about an hour actually closer to an hour and a half now, taking requests from investors like you. I share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to bring us stocks. I'll go over the information and Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, I got to be fair with you and let you know, if you drop your ticker during the show, chances are I'll never get to it. The reason for that is I drop a placeholder for this video earlier, an announcement that I've had in the live event so people show up. Well, you can drop your tickers in then. And I do go by first come, first served. So by the time four o'clock rolls around, I've already been given enough tickers to cover the entire show and I can't get to the ones being dropped during the show. I know it doesn't seem fair, but that's the way it works right now. So if you really want your ticker looked at, Get it in the queue early before 4 o'clock. That is 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays, every Thursday. So what I like to do on this show is share my personal due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every day. I am a day trader looking for stocks under 5 bucks, and I can find those on every market. And while I'm trading, I'm constantly keeping my eye open for a stock that has heat, that has potential to make us some money. Now, I can find that heat in a lot of different places. I can find it in the news or I can find it in the charts. The best is when you find hot news and a hot chart. Then you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And that's what we've got today. So we're taking a look at ticker EPAZ. This is EPAZ Inc. When you think of EPAZ, you probably think of drones. And rightfully so. They're doing a lot with drones. But they work with a lot of other things as well. And I am going to generally cover these. But what I really want to focus in on is the hot news press that came out today. They told us that they are opening up a manufacturing facility where they are going to make their solid state electric batteries. What? We don't have any of those in the world yet. Nobody's actually put one on the market. Nobody's invented a successful one yet. So this is hot news, right? Now, the chart responded to it, but not as much as you would think. She took a jump and a bounce, but she didn't go flying anywhere. But she did put herself in a brilliant breakout position. She is in what I like to call an atypical breakout. I call it the atypical because it's the one I look for the most when I'm looking at charts. That's when you got your 200-day SMA coming down fast and furious and your price is deep underneath it. When that 200 starts to level off and get flat, the price sneaks up underneath it and gets ready to break out. Once she gets on top of that 200, that's normally when she flies, where we are right up underneath it, working our way up. Good time to be looking at EPAS. So EPAS finished today at 001, my favorite buy price. This is the quickest, largest gains I found on the charts. Going from 001 to 002 is really nothing, and you've doubled your money doing that. Remember, there's only one more digit behind that one, like an odometer. So once that spins around, boom, your one moves to two. So I love buying on 001s. She was up today just a little over 11%. She is on the pink tier in current. This is the bottom tier on the OTC, the most riskiest, the most riskiest, the riskiest tier that they have. And the reason for that is you don't get a lot of validated information down here. You get financials, but they're not validated. You don't have a CPA look at them. The only validated information we normally get with the pink are these two green ticks. And that's why I tell you to always look for them. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. If you've got these two, that's pretty much the best you're going to get with the pink. When it comes to pinks, we pretty much have to take the word of management for everything. So what is EPAS about? Well, as I said, they do do a lot. I want to cover it generally. We're going to start here and then we'll move over to their website. EPAS Inc. specializes in enterprise cloud business process software. I do believe that virtually everything they do connects to their cloud. They deal with metaverse solutions, blockchain mobile apps, and drone technology solutions with over 500 repeat customers. 
Now their first product, basically, I guess, was Desk Flex. They got this in 2008, and believe it or not, that is a Metaverse virtual office. Now it started getting better and better and better, and by the time COVID hit, it was good. And you know what? They were ready. While we were all sent home from our companies and our jobs and couldn't get in touch with them, and everybody was scampering to find a way for us to stay in contact, this company already had a product on the market. So they did real good during COVID. They go on to tell us that EPAS has also acquired 11 software companies that have converted or are in the process of converting their legacy software products to cloud software using EPAS's technology. Now, it was just a while ago, they spun off ZenPay, which was one of their subsidiaries that got very successful. It is now on its own. Jumping on over to their website now. I'm going to read this description because it gives us a little more information here, and I can also throw up some pictures while I'm reading it. EPAS Inc. is a mission-critical provider of metaverse solutions, blockchain, cryptocurrency apps, and cloud-based business solutions. We provide customized software enterprise solutions to businesses, governments, healthcare providers, and post-secondary institutions. Moreover, our software products include office space management, Bitcoin wallet, and a payment system, applicant tracking system, kennel business software solutions, and innovative industrial drone technology, along with other things like their batteries. They don't talk much about batteries here, but they're doing a lot with them. Their drones have batteries in them, and they want to be in control of those batteries. So they just submitted a patent. They got it for AI battery. It's a smart battery. It uh, is monitoring events as the drone is flying. The weather changes. The wind gets stronger. It adjusts the consumption on the battery. They do have that patent out there. They go on to tell us that EPAS is also developing metaverse business solutions, which they're already into, and enable people to collaborate in real time through virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, I think to myself, they could be ahead of the game when metaverse comes back into the picture. You know, for a while there, it was hot. All you had to do was put metaverse into your headline of your news, and boom, your stock was running, even if you really weren't involved in it. Well, this company already had a metaverse project before the metaverse got hot, and they're still working on that. So when the metaverse comes back, we could see some real strong improvements here. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, considering she had hot news, it was hot. She jumped from 18 million shares, her daily average over the last 30 days, to over 50 million shares today. Hot. Share structure for EPAS. Oh, we don't like that. That's a heck of a lot of shares, folks. 1.4 billion shares on the market. 43 million are owned by the insiders, which means we get all the rest. 1.3 billion shares. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, for two main reasons. One, you don't get a lot of shareholder value. There's so many shares, it's like cutting a, a cake into a thousand pieces instead of six pieces. How thin is that slice you get? The other problem, reverse split. Whenever a company starts to show success, when they get near a penny, we've been seeing a lot of these sub-penny stocks do reverse splits. And they don't have to announce they're going to do it before they do it. If they had already voted on this any time in the last year, it could be on the books for management's discretion. Management can use it any time they want. Normally, they get a spread like anywhere from 1 to 10 to 1 to 50 anytime he wants to use it. And if he wants to use it, it'll just happen. There will be no filing. There will be no news press. You'll just wake up and the shares will be gone. That is a possibility whenever you see billions of shares in a stock getting close to a penny. Market cap for the company looks to be about $1.3 million. Jumping on over into those financials. Yep, they're making money. They were doing about $1.5 million. Push that up to close to $2 million over the last two years. Now, we know it's millions of dollars because I got to add three more zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. Now, what's most peculiar here is that cost of revenue. It's zip. They're not paying anything for any of the money that they make. 
Now, this can happen with digital products, and they do have some digital products. It can also happen with consultancy. You don't have to pay anything to talk. But they've got physical products as well. So I would expect some sort of cost of revenue here, but we don't see anything. What about the quarterlies? Still no cost of revenues, but they are making money. They're doing between $450,000 and $600,000 every quarter. And we do have a quarterly report and an annual report that is due right now. Balance sheet for the company. Whew. Thank God for those three zeros, right? Money in the bank. It's not a dollar. It's $1,000, which is probably the minimum they got to keep in the account just to keep it open. Total assets for the company were roughly $5 million. Total liabilities, also roughly $5 million. Looks like the assets win. We've got $27,000 for the stockholder equity. You can take that $27,000 and divide it into the 1.3 billion shares we have. That's our stockholder equity. Looking at the disclosures for the company. We got nothing here since 2023 and all of our financials are caught up. So let's just jump on over into that news now. Now, there literally is a ton of news over here, and I want to headline a lot of it, but we're only going to dive into the most recent piece of news here. Now, I have gone all the way back to September of last year. The company makes a major presentation with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. They also did a demo with the U.S. Defense Department. The company signs a memorandum of understanding with the Taiwan defense contractor, Thunder Tiger Corps. They also did a demonstration with the United States Navy. Also in September, all this news was from September of last year, the company did a demo with their partner NATO countries, German Defense, Law Enforcement, and Rail Line. The company also had a presentation with high-ranking U.S. Navy personnel. The company sends the first manufactured drones to Ireland. The company has a major experiment demonstration with the U.S. Navy under extreme weather conditions. They took the drones and they put them in areas where it was below zero, and then they went to areas where it was over 100 degrees. The drones had no problem whatsoever. November of 2023, the company establishes new partnerships with United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia companies. December Xena Drone was awarded Phase 1 U.S. Air Force Dual Purpose Technology Contract. And there's a lot of news here about the Air Force. All of this news is about how they are progressing through these phases, getting closer and closer to these bigger and bigger contracts. Then we've got the news that came out today. EPAS Inc. tells us that their subsidiary Galaxy Batteries Inc. unveils manufacturing site to spearhead solid-state battery technology. The company, a mission-critical provider of solid-state battery technology, drone technology, blockchain mobile apps, and cloud-based business software solutions, has announced today that its subsidiary, Galaxy Batteries, Inc., a trailblazer in solid-state battery technology, is proud to announce the opening of its new manufacturing site. They're not building it. It's opened. A testament to the company's unwavering commitment to innovation and sustainability. The new facility is in Sharia City, United Arab Emirates, and represents a significant milestone for Galaxy Batteries as it continues to lead the charge in developing products for the drone and aerospace market. Our new manufacturing facility is to manufacture our solid-state batteries for drones and the electric vertical takeoff and landings. You're talking about the planes that fly like drones. So, to me, when I read this, it sounds like they are ready to start making them right now. They are opening the factory. They're not building it. They're employing it. They're putting it to use now, and they tell us they're going to start making these Solid state electric batteries. They don't have them yet. We saw a picture, but what do we know about that picture? It's just a picture. There is no patent for any solid state electric batteries from this company yet. They don't have any patents. You can't go making a product like this without patents. So we need to see a patent come out first. So they've got the factory. 
We've got a real nice picture of what the battery may look like, but we don't actually have the battery yet. They say they're getting close. How close? We have no idea. There's a lot of companies getting close. They're doing tests. Somebody's going to have one on the market this year. I am pretty sure of that. And hopefully it will be EPAS. So there's a lot more information we could go through with this company because they cover a lot of different products, but I'm going to let you look at that, folks. I just want to focus in on the catalyst that we need to be looking at right now, not to mention the chart is perfectly setting up for a breakout. Let's go take a look at that now. So let's take a look at EPAS, ticker E-P-A-Z, and we're going to chart this on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. So I've got this opened up to a six month, four hour view. And as you can see, she has been in a serious tailspin the entire six months. We were at a high in July of last year of double zero five seven. And we hit an all time low of triple zero seven just about a week ago. Now off of that low, she is bouncing and starting to climb. Where's she going to go? Well, let's grab a support and resistance here. We got a real strong one right there. You can see everything has been sitting on top of that for a long time. We got another one right here. Obviously a big load sitting on top of that one. And then we've got a third one we can draw right there. So we are currently at 001. Our first resistance comes in at 0015. That'll put us on top of the 200 day SMA. So not only do you get a 50% gain, but you get perfect positioning for a run. Our next resistance comes in at uh, 0023. And our last one is up here at 0034. Now, looking real close, you can see our volume is growing. It's never been weak. It has been packed and solid, but it is getting stronger and stronger right now. Looking at current events, you can see she was on that serious downtrend, hit this low bubble, went sideways, and we just had our breakout today. She started to climb yesterday, but she wasn't doing a whole lot. You can see by the size of the bars, she got real excited breaking out over that 50-day SMA and is eagerly pushing towards that 200-day SMA. Our oscillators, well, they're not too bad. We've got a imminent crossover on our PPO. You want that blue line on top of the pink, just like your MACD. Our MACD is climbing. It's about ready to cross the signal line. And we've got those positive big green bars accumulating right now. And even though the chart looks strong, the RSI is taking a drop from the overbought right down to 55, which is the lowest I like to see my RSI. Let's come on down to that one hour, 20 day view. Very interesting. We've got our downtrend coming down to the slow bubble. She bounced off of it. And where did she go to? The 200 haul. The 200 haul is just like your 200 day SMA. They're both real important. The 200 day SMA takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together and gives you a point on the chart. Well, the 200 day haul does the same thing, but it puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a different line. And most of the time it's underneath the 200 day SMA when the stock is falling. Well, what you'll see a lot with penny stocks is that they will get on top of the 200 haul and they will use that as their springboard to jump up to the 200 day SMA. I see it over and over again. And that's exactly what happened here for three days. She sat on top of the 200 haul and what happened when it started to climb? My 200 haul is purple when it's falling. As soon as it starts climbing, it changes color to blue. Well, look what happened here. As soon as that changed colors, boom, that was the launch right there. She put herself up on top of the 200. She fell back down onto a nine day and continued climbing, hitting a high of 0013 today, falling back underneath the 200 and then coming back. And she's sitting right on top of the 200 right now at 001. It's beautiful placement. All of our SMAs, the 200 haul, 50 and 20 are all turned up and starting to climb. They are coming to that 200 day SMA. When they cross it, that is going to be a golden cross. Think of it as a turbo boost to the price. Osculators, they were showing a lot of strength, but this big red bar at the end of the day has yanked our osculators down as well. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute view. 
So there's your jump for the day. She was underneath the 200. Here's our low bubble. She worked away very slowly up on top of the 50, stayed on top of the 50 as our 200 was falling. She was slicing through the 200 with no effort. And then boom, over on our one hour chart, our 200 haul changed the trend and boom, we got this big jump right here. She jumped from triple zero eight up to double zero one two. Take away all the zeros, you're going from 8 to 12. That's a 33% gain right there. When she fell, she fell back to her 20-day SMA, rolled that back up to that same high, kept bouncing around in this area, pushed off of this big dip to a big rip. That was our new high for the day. And then she's fallen again. Now she is way down here at 001, floating above this 200. Now, she could come down to this 200-day SMA, but remember, over here on our one-hour chart, she is sitting right on top of it. It depends on which chart investors are looking at, but she is in a real good position right now. Our oscillators, okay, the five-minute chart, they're pretty bloody cool. We have a negative crossover on our PPO, negative crossover on our MACD, and our RSI is underneath 55, down at 42. But I do see that the PPO and the MACD are trying to work on that curve to come back up, which is what I would expect. We had a big dip here that came down under the 50 and then shot back up. We're getting a bigger dip underneath the 50. I think we might get a bigger rip up over top. So that's what I would be looking for, folks. The chart looks strong to me. She is set up for a rip. Do some more due diligence. You may like this company for the long hold too. She's got a lot of things going on between the metaverse, cloud, drones, and the solid state electric battery. It's all great stuff. Remember folks, the more you know, more you're going to grow. <laughs> See you folks.